and we finally have this month's Inside Infinite, which contains all the information to do with flighting, and talks about the goals of flighting, the process, and what the insiders should expect. They say they'll also go into detail about the content and experience included in the tech previews, which will focus on the bots and weapon drills, two brand new additions to Halo. They start by talking about the Halo Insider program, and how you need to register, verify your email, and opt in for flighting, but make it very apparent that registering doesn't guarantee access to the tech previews or the pre-release hands-on game tests, and that there will only be a limited amount of people invited to the initial tech test. But within the first pool of invites sent out, it will be distributed evenly between people on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and different PC configurations, for them to see the effect of the flighting on all platforms. And then they go to talk about the previous flighting, saying that how the flighting for MCC was instrumental for the game's improvement and the journey to bringing it to PC, and that the flighting model and partnering with Halo Insiders has been the cornerstone of MCC's ongoing seasonal updates. And they say when applying that to Halo Infinite, the goals are to robustly test the game and core services at a large scale, and allow players to provide feedback on the game before launch. When it comes to the names of technical previews, flights, or betas, 343 say that they've had all sorts of pre-launch versions of the game, and terms like alpha and beta are often thrown around when playing a pre-release demo of a future game, but they clarify that they feel like they're further along than what would truly be considered an alpha, but they're not really at the level of an overall beta experience. And they're specifically calling it a technical preview because that's what it is. A preview of all the systems at a large scale and being able to test the stress limits of the technical side of Halo Infinite. And when they go on to talk about testing the game and the core services at scale, they plan for feedback and bugs that people could uncover so that these can be fixed before launch. The main focus areas of the flighting comes in stability, online services, and the Halo Insider slash Waypoint VNext app. The ability is to test how the game runs and whether people are getting crashes, inconsistent frame rates when they should be, or poor performance. Online services can reflect matchmaking, server scaling, playlists, challenges and stats, battle pass progression, store functionality, armor customization, parting up with friends. And the Halo Insider slash Waypoint VNext app is a focused area to see how the app is an extension of the game and a companion to see how it works in tandem with Halo Infinite. All the game performance is captured using tools to collect information in nearly every scenario possible, such as game crashing, matchmaking failures, so that the technical previews can compare internal data to see how to fix stability and performance. When it comes to player feedback, they say that the sooner they receive feedback, the sooner they can plan and take action on the feedback. They'd also like to clarify that with the technical preview, they're entering the next step in a multi-year process, and that the scale of the technical preview is greater than anything they've ever done to date, and that brings unique and value opportunities to capture even more perspectives. The player feedback focus area in the upcoming flights is going to be core gameplay, wanting to know people's feedback on the core combat experience, player movement, weapon balance and equipment. And how fun it is to engage in battle in Halo Infinite. Is one side more balanced than the other? Is it fun to play on? The Academy's weapon drills. Do the weapon drills give you a good understanding of how the weapon will function? And is there fun variety in the weapon drills? And the menu and battle pass UI. How intuitive was the menu navigation? Were you able to understand your progression through the battle pass? And were you able to equip customization items easily? We're then shown a render of the in-game threat detector. A new piece of equipment, which we might have seen already, seeing as how we've seen sonar equipment that detects threats, and this piece of equipment called the threat detector. Anyway, that's my guess. They then go on to talk about transparency. It's important to note that they're listening closely, and that they'll act on feedback they receive before launch. They go on to say when it comes to bugs and issues specifically, insiders can utilise the Halo support site to file a ticket, to ensure that the team gets wind of these bugs or issues, and then can fix them. In the upcoming technical preview, the foundation of the flighting set will focus on bots and a slice of the new academy experience. The technical preview is initially focused on the specific areas to help them gather some scale data as they bring new experiences to Halo for the first time. And in future flights, they plan to expand into more content, including traditional PvP arena and big team battle. With this in mind, the focused areas for the first technical preview are arena gameplay versus bots, arena maps, academy weapon drills, menu and battle pass UI, and new waypoint experiences on web, iOS, and Android.
and to gather specific feedback on the areas, the first flight will contain the following content and experiences. The bot arena playlist will put four players against four bots on arena maps. And for the technical preview, the bot experience will feature Slayer across three maps in the build, Bazaar, Recharge, and Life Fire. And to keep players on their toes, they're planning for a daily content offering that will evolve over the course of the flight based on the overall engagement of participants. Next up is the Academy Weapon Drills. The weapon drills offer players a brand new way to learn each weapon's function before entering the heat of battle, dropping into the firing range that features moving and strafing bots for target practice. And weapon drills feature different levels of difficulty in a star rating system. The more damage you deal, the higher your score. And in the upcoming technical preview, they're planning on including the following subset of weapon drills. The MA-40 AR, the BR-75, the Mark 50 Sidekick, CQS-48 Bulldog, the Needler, the VK-78 Commando, the S7 Sniper, the Plasma Pistol, the Pulse Carbine, the Ravager, the Heat Wave, and the Skewer. On top of the gameplay experiences, they also want to make sure the navigation in the game's menu feels intuitive, and they're interested to see how players move through the UI to unlock their battle passes, check challenge, use a store, and apply earned customization elements in the armor hall. In order to allow insiders to unlock their battle passes and unlock various customization options, we'll be granting invited accounts a set amount of in-game credits, called CR. Players will be free to use their CR how they see fit, but customization items unlocked during the technical previews will not carry over to the game when it releases later this year. Similar to how we're only fighting with a subset of arena maps and modes, the technical preview will feature a truncated battle pass, and a small fraction of the customization options planned for launch. The key focus is to ensure battle pass, challenge unlocking systems, and customization of equipment are both fully functional and hold up to scale, but having the battle pass in the flight isn't meant to be a showcase of the launch content, so don't read too much into that. Lastly, in coordination with the new Halo Infinite tech previews, they'll also be flighting a new Halo Waypoint web and mobile app experience. Halo Insider should be able to view their battle pass progression, challenges, and even customize their Spartans. All Halo Insiders that are invited to the technical preview will be able to access and take advantage of these experiences, which will be directly connected to their profiles in the flight. Finally, talking about some sort of date. 343 say that we know the largest question is, when is the technical preview? And the release of this blog means they're getting very, very close to the flighting, but they need to ensure that they've successfully cleared the final gate before they're officially a go. That being said, they've given the okay to say that the first spot technical preview could happen as soon as next weekend. Hello there, future me here. Turns out that people are getting flighting invitations, right now, and later on today, Halo will be hosting a live stream showing everything that will be in the tech test. The tech test will be taking place from the 29th of July to the 1st of August, so check your emails to see if you got in. For me, unfortunately, I did not, so now I will simply curl up and live with the pain. But back to my past self. Another edit from even future me, I've just checked the promotional folder in my Gmail account, and lo and behold, the invite to the technical test. All pain is gone, and relief is rushing in. But anyway, back to past, past me. At first, I'll be hosting hundreds of thousands of Halo Insiders, and they'll invite even more eligible for the next flight. And that is near enough all the noteworthy information in this month's Inside Infinite. Meaning that we could be playing Halo Infinite in quite literally under a week. But for now, that's all. Consider subbing.